Hello again, everybody. How's it going? How are you doing? Hope everyone's well. Um, let us, for this uh, video, continue reviewing the sentences that I picked out of your drafts of essay one. Uh, we'll do the um, last four sentences, sentences five through eight. I have given you access to the Google Doc that these sentences are on. Please open that now so we can follow along. And um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so sentence five originally reads as follows. In the movie Star Wars, A New Hope, Princess Leia Organa plays a major role in the destruction of the Death Star, where she displays strong traits, including determination, courage, mental strength, and intelligence, even though she faces strong resistance from both her ma male allies and enemies, partly because she is a woman. Okay, the problem with this sentence is that there are just trying to get, the, the author is trying to get across uh, too, many, too many thoughts, too many ideas here. There are, are at least three distinct different ideas in this sentence. It would read much better if they were simply just broken up into sentences of their own. For example, in the movie Star Wars A New Hope, Princess Leia Organa plays a major role in the destruction of the Death Star. She displays strong traits, including determination, courage, mental strength, and intelligence. She does this even though she faces strong resistance from both her male allies and enemies, partly because she is a woman. So remember, a sentence is a group of grammatically correct words that uh, convey a single thought. So, you know, sentences can be complex, but they don't have to be complex. Just use, uh, convey each separate thought in its own sentence, just like you convey each idea in its own paragraph. You know, it's the same uh, principle. Remember, you just want to be as clear as possible, and we'll discuss that more in a second. Sentence number six. I like dramas for the intense moments they provide. It's such a malleable genre that it can be grouped with a multitude of different works and it can still provide hours of enjoyment. This is called a comma splice and several of you did this. Um, I just happened to pick this one out as the example. This is where two groups of words that can stand on their own as separate sentences are joined together with a comma. And so they're two separate sentences that are just joined together with a comma. It's called a comma splice. Um, there are three ways to fix this. The first and the way that's usually preferable is to just break them up into separate sentences. For example, I like dramas for the intense moments they provide, period. It's such a malleable genre that it can be grouped with a multitude of different works and it can still provide hours of entertainment. So those are two separate sentences. The second way you can fix that uh, a comma splice is to just replace the comma with a semicolon. Um, for instance, I like dramas for the intense moments they provide. It's such a malleable genre that it can be grouped with a multitude of different works and it can still provide hours of enjoyment. So a semicolon will uh, join those two. A semicolon is used to separate two different groups of words that can stand on their own as sentences, okay? Um, it's, it's a perfectly legitimate way to write. I use them myself. Sometimes they're looked, as a bit, looked at as a bit old fashioned, but you know, that's fine. You're, you're still allowed to use them. Um, the third way you can join the two sentences is with a conjunction, a word like uh, and or but or if. For instance, I like dramas for the intense moments they provide. And it's such a malleable genre that it can be grouped with a multitude of different works and still provide hours of enjoyment. Okay, so you see those are the two sentences that can be, that can stand on their own. You can join them with a comma and a um, conjunction. All right. Um, all right, so I'm going to throw in your attendance question here. This one's going to be a little bit different. You don't have to look anything up. As some of you may have noticed, I have been growing what I am calling my quarantine beard. I have not shaved since this whole thing started. 
I have not shaved my beard. I have not shaved my head. Um, I'm just letting it go. It is getting to the point now where I am beginning to look either Santa Claus-ish or uh, a bit like Tom Hanks in um, uh, Castaway. All right, I'm picturing this thing just getting out of control. So I don't know whether what I should do with it because when I s decided to start it, I said, let's just grow a quarantine beard. I'm not shaving till this thing is over. Now we have at least a month more of sheltering in place. So I'm not sure what to do. I am leaving it in your hands. All right, so for your attendance question, you are to answer the question, what should I do with the quarantine beard? Should I A, keep it, B, trim it so that I still have a beard, but it's like trimmed down and it looks a little neater and I'll do the same thing with the hair on my head, or C, shave and just shave the beard off, keep the goatee the way I normally have, as you've seen in class, okay? So the, the choices are, again, A, keep it and just keep going with the Santa Claus look, B, trim it and keep it but neaten it up a little, or C, shave that thing off completely. It's in your hands. You each get one vote. Let me know what I should do, all right? So uh, A, keep it, B, trim it, C, shave it, and um, send your vote into the regular email address there, mroscoenglish112 at gmail.com. I cannot wait to see what you guys have in store for me, all right? It is in your hands completely. All right, question or I'm sorry, rather sentence number seven. Okay. Even in my favorite movies, I noticed we tend to make men the more important characters and make women seem like sidekicks who can't achieve the same things men can, which impacts the audience watching it into thinking so too. Again, too many thoughts in this uh, one sentence. In order to make this as clear as possible, the thoughts should be broken up into their own sentences. So check out the way I did it and notice the last sentence is also recast a bit to be a, to be a, a little more clear. Even in my favorite movies, I noticed we tend to make men the more important characters, period. Women are seemed, are, are, I'm sorry, women are made to seem like sidekicks who can't achieve the same things men can, period. This convinces the audience to think the same way. All right, so three different sentences, much clearer. And look at the last sentence. Look how I clean that up a little bit. The way uh, this author wrote it uh, said, which impacts the audience watching it into thinking so too. I did a couple things here. First of all, I changed the verb. You don't impact someone to do something. You convince them to do something. So this is just word choice in which the word um, that we chose to replace the old word is more precise, okay? Again, I am not trying to impact you guys into writing a different way. I am trying to convince you to do it, to teach you to do it, to enroll in a, in a different way of doing it, all right? All those words have different shades of meaning. You always want to choose the word that uh, more precisely describes exactly what you mean. So, and, and you know what, just even looking at this, I'm thinking of maybe a better word, maybe influences would be better. Maybe that's the word the author was trying to go for in the first place. This influences the audience to think the same way. That's probably more precise, convince, Convincing someone to do something is one thing. Influencing them to do something means something else, right? Movies don't convince audiences. They don't come out and say, hey, would you please do this thing that we're telling you to do? They influence them, which is something that the, the, the audience may not even realize, okay? And uh, look at something else I did with this sentence. The original sentence said, audience watching it, all right? Um, watching it is unnecessary. That's what the audience does. If there's an audience, it's watching the movie, right? 
that that's built into the word that's built into the meaning of the word audience. Okay, so you don't need it. Now you're thinking big deal, it's two extra words. Okay, but two or three extra words in each sentence, or maybe five or six extra words in each paragraph are words that um, you're making the reader read when the reader does not have to. You're making the reader do more work than necessary to understand the point that you're trying to get across to the reader. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to make the reader work harder to understand what you were saying. Um, again, it's not because I'm saying, oh, don't make us teachers work so hard. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is um, when I try to teach you guys something, say what a thesis is, I'm not trying to make you work harder than you need to in order to get that concept. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I want you to try to understand it as readily and easily as possible. You may argue I use too many words to do it. Guilty, okay? Absolutely. But in terms of your writing, when we write, we don't want to make our readers read more words than they have to in order to understand the concept that we're trying to convey to them. We want them to get it as uh, readily and easily as possible. That's what the best writing does. It says the most possible with the least amount of words possible, okay? Um, it's a very important thing to remember, and it's something to do in revision. If in your draft you write the audiences who are watching it, that's fine. That's absolutely fine to write in your draft. But in your revision, you want to try and tighten things up so that your sentences say the most possible with the least amount of words. All right? It's something to do in revision. Again, not to worry about while you're drafting, but in revision, see how much you can tighten things up, okay? Um, sentence number eight. Okay, sentence number eight. The films are widely enjoyed by Disney fans, consisting of characters familiar and new, they tell fun and heartwarming stories. There are two problems here. First, again, this is a comma splice. I think that the films are widely enjoyed by Disney fans is supposed to be one idea. While consisting of characters familiar and new, they tell fun and heartwarming stories is another idea. All right, they need to be fixed by one of the methods that I described above. Um, the, the easiest way to do it would be, the films are widely enjoyed by Disney fans, period. Consisting of characters familiar and new, they tell fun and heartwarming stories, period. Two separate sentences, okay? Um, the second problem in this paragraph is that there is a vague antecedent. What? What is that? Okay, let's go back to elementary and middle school English. A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. An antecedent is the noun that is taken, pla taken uh, it's the noun that the pronoun is taking the place of. An antecedent is the pronoun that the noun is taking the place of, All right? Generally speaking, the antecedent, uh, the noun that's replacing the pronoun is the noun that's closest to the pronoun, all right? So the pronoun in this sentence is they, but what is the antecedent? What is it place, replacing? Is it the word characters? Is it the word fans? I think from what I can tell that they in there is supposed to take the place of films. And that's the noun that is in fact farthest away from the pronoun. You get what I'm saying? If you look at the sentence, the films 
are widely enjoyed by Disney fans consisting of characters familiar and new. They tell fun and heartwarming stories. Does the they mean that the characters tell fun and heartwarming story stories? Does it mean the fans tell heartwarming stories? I think the author ne means the films tell uh, fun and heartwarming stories. Um, but the problem is that there is the noun, and then there are two other nouns, and then there is the antecedent that re refers back to the first noun. Um, a good way to fix this is as follows. The films are widely enjoyed by Disney fans, period. Consisting of characters familiar and new, the films tell fun and heartwarming stories. All I did there was separate the two sentences with a period, the two sentences with a period rather, and then just take out the pronoun and leave the original noun there. Just repeat the original noun. Sometimes the simplest way to do these things are the best, right? Uh, you could even put these films. Um, the films are widely enjoyed by Disney fans, consisting of characters familiar and new. These films tell fun and heartwarming stories, okay? Or if you can think of another word um, than films, these short movies or, you know, whatever, as long as the reader still knows what you're referring to, that's fine. But to leave the pronoun in there gets confusing. You want to make sure that the reader always knows what you're writing about, obviously, but you want to make sure when you use a pronoun that the reader is sure what noun it's replacing. So you always want to make sure that that noun is closest to the pronoun that it's uh, uh, replacing. Um, right. So remember, your first duty as a writer is to be clear. And, and as I've written here, I've written it out so that you can see it and refer back to it. Some of the biggest problems that we have in writing sentences are trying to write sentences that sound fancy and academic and worthy of being in an academic paper and, and so fancy and academic and intelligent sounding that you're sure that they will get you a better grade. Uh, but, and, and they might, but the instructor needs to know what you're talking about, all right? If you're writing, again, if you're mimicking the language of an academic paper without really knowing that language, you run the risk of having sentences that sound like gibberish. Just as, as, as I said before uh, in, in an earlier video, I can try and sound like I'm speaking French or Chinese or Italian, but to a person who speaks French or Chinese Italian, what I'm saying is going to sound like absolute nonsense. It's going to sound like gibberish because I don't know those languages. Don't try to, um, don't try to mimic that language until you learn that language a little better. Okay. As I've written here, First and foremost, be clear. Then impress me with your sentence constructing ability. Okay? Um, all right. So those are the sentences. So here's what we got going on. Essay three drafts are due today. I think at different times I may have said five or six. So let's just make it six. You have until six o'clock to um, upload your... Uh, essay drafts, essay three drafts into Blackboard. And please, for the love of all that's holy, I beg you, submit them in DocX format. Um, that, that, that's just Word format. If you do not submit them in DocX format, I can't write comments on them. And more importantly, for this next homework assignment, your classmates can't write comments on them because what I'm doing next, like I did with the theses, I'm switching uh, essays with everybody and you are going to comment on them according to the prompt that, that you'll find on Blackboard. If you hand in your essay in a PDF format, you will not get, get it back with, um, with comments from a classmate. 
All right, I, I just can't, I mean, I can't do it, your classmate can do it. You can't do that on PDF. You can do it on DocX format. Hand in your SA3 draft in DocX format and you will get it back with comments from a classmate. If you hand it in in PDF format, you will not get it back, okay? That's, that's all I can tell you. So hand in your SA3 drafts by today, Monday, at 6 p.m. in DocX format. What I'm going to do is uh, tonight, Monday evening, I am going to send you, I'm going to email you a copy of your classmates um, draft. Um, I will do it again anonymously. Um, I know a lot of you don't care, but some of you do. So I'm going to take the name off it, put your name on your draft, but I will go and take your name off it and send it to, forward it to a classmate, okay? Um, if you look on Blackboard, your next homework assignment, your current homework assignment rather, for Wednesday is to return those drafts with comments, with your comments on them according to the prompts uh, that you'll find in your homework assignment. Those will be due by Wednesday at noon. You must have them back into me by Wednesday by noon in order to get credit for this homework assignment because then that will give me time on Wednesday to hand them back. All right, you got it? So hand in your draft of the essay, essay three, by today, Monday at noon. Monday evening, I will, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. Monday at six. Hand in your draft of essay three by Monday at six. Monday evening, I will switch them up. I will send everybody a copy of a classmate's anonymous draft. You will look on uh, your, on Blackboard, the current homework assignment will give you prompts to answer, uh, to make, you know, comments um, uh, on your classmate's paper. Your classmate's paper with your comments is due back to me on Blackboard by Wednesday at noon. Okay, got it? Good, all right. Any questions or problems, please uh, feel free to contact me. I have been speaking to uh, people from the class uh, regularly, and I'm happy to speak to anyone who has questions or comments or problems. And don't forget your attendance question. Please email that email. <laughs> email that to me at the usual address. Okay, that's it for today. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I hope everybody is safe and healthy and uh, I will talk to you soon, all right? See you on Wednesday on YouTube, okay? Take care.